The science of how to build a functioning lightsaber is pretty awesome, especially when looking at things like what the blade itself is actually made out of. As long as you're not scared of accidentally bursting into the hottest flames you've ever experienced if you mess up. Looking at the blade of a lightsaber, it is thought that the blade itself could be created from several possibilities, either being made out of a high-intensity laser, the fourth state of matter aka plasma, or a beam of pure energy. But only one of these will actually work, and avoid the major issues of the others. If you want to know what a lightsaber blade is really made out of, then look no further than this diagram of a lightsaber. We can see that it has an incredibly strong power cell, a special living crystal that both channels and gives the blade its color, but it's when we look towards the top of the lightsaber, where the blade comes out, that we can see that it has a magnetic ring that is said to stabilize the blade, along with two interesting knobs next to it that adjust both the power and length of the blade. What's really interesting about this is out of all the high energy substances a lightsaber blade could be made out of, only one of them is strongly affected by a magnetic field, plasma. This is because plasma, being a superheated electrically charged gas, has electrons floating freely within it, and can therefore be controlled and shaped by magnetic fields. Plasma can also achieve extremely high temperatures, making it able to cut through any piece of steel and most substances in the manner that we see lightsabers do. And it can be rapidly ignited into its high energy state with the click of a switch. On the flip side, while a plasma blade can be contained and shaped into a butt-kicking sword, a laser beam would more or less keep flying off endlessly into space unless you use some sort of lens and mirror system to contain your laser sword, making the sword look more like this. And the pure energy that lightsabers are said to be made out of isn't physically possible. As energy is a property, an attribute of an object, rather than something that could ever exist on its own. Now if you want to know how to make a real lightsaber blade for yourself, you're only going to need a couple of things for the plasma blade itself. Within the lightsaber, you would need to contain some sort of high energy gas or liquid that could then be vaporized into a gas that then would simply need to be heated via an energy source like the diatom power cell at the base of the hilt. Once the gas is emitted and charged into a swirl of plasma, you would then need a magnetic stabilizing ring to create a magnetic field around the plasma, shaping it into your glowing blade. Depending on what type of gas you use to form the plasma blade, this would determine the blade's color. For instance, if you decide to use xenon, the lightsaber's color would glow blue, while nitrogen would make it purple, helium would be orange, mercury is green, and neon gas would get you red. Even more so, once you have formed your glowing blade of your preferred color, it's possible that you could even manually adjust the length of the blade to be longer or shorter by changing the length of the magnetic field like we see in Star Wars. You could even adjust the size of the blade by adding or taking away more or less gas. And just as we can accessorize our own blade color, you could also do the same with a lightsaber hilt. Sort of. The thing about any lightsaber blade is that they are extremely hot. As most of these plasma-based high-energy blades are set in Star Wars to run 15,000 to 30,000 degrees Celsius, which is about three to six times hotter than the sun's surface, which easily matches up with how hot plasma can be, and can also get insanely hotter than that, which no Jedi or Sith would ever dare to do. This means that you need to be extremely careful with whatever metal you decide to use to make the hilt out of, or else risk the heat radiating off of the plasma blade melting the top of your hilt all over your hand. Metals that you likely want to use would need to have a combination of strength and mostly a high melting point. Something like stainless steel, tungsten, titanium, and possibly other stronger metal alloys that are still being discovered. Metals that could also house and keep any and all electronics within the blade safe from the plasma residing above them. But this still leaves us with one major problem that really remains the single biggest problem we face in building a lightsaber. And this led me down a rabbit hole of something that not only shows us how technology keeps advancing at such a staggering rate that is only going faster each year, but also as to how incredible this future technology that solves our lightsaber problem is going to be. Just promise you won't cut your leg off. The problem with turning a gas into a wonderful plasma sword is this requires a ton of power to do. In fact, it turns out that the power consumption of a real working lightsaber runs somewhere around 20 megawatts an hour, or the power that 
15,000 average American houses use per hour. Currently, the only device small enough to create the amount of power needed to sustain a lightsaber over any extended period of time is a small hydrogen bomb. At least it used to be. Now we've got something even smaller, with the potential to completely transform any power technology in the future, including our very own lightsabers. Much like how Star Wars solved their problem by first carrying around lightsabers, called protosabers that required a large battery to be hauled around on the user's back, before eventually they were able to condense their power source into smaller and smaller packages, until finally being able to condense their power source into something so small and lightweight that it could fit into the bottom of their lightsaber hilts. A process that we here on planet Earth are following with emerging technologies like the nano battery. As strange as it sounds, scientists are hard at work condensing power all the way down to the nano scale, or one billionth of a meter. And the true beauty of these things, these little batteries, is that they're better. Like, a lot better. In fact, a nano battery is able to offer more high density power and increased energy per battery, as well as greater storage capacity, faster charging and discharging rates, has a greater durability, and a dramatically extended lifetime, overall beating a conventional sized battery at literally everything. Because since these tiny things operate at the nano scale, this makes them far more efficient. Basically, when scientists shrunk everything down that makes a battery work, they realized that not only are the errors a battery could make significantly reduced, but the batteries become much faster, more powerful, and they can fit way, way more of the energy producing things into it, like the many electrodes that cover the battery, so a nano battery can also produce more energy at once. And thanks to other ongoing creations like nano wires and nano tubes, the storage and output capabilities of nano batteries are only currently scratching the surface of an unknown well of new power. Power that will shift the future and be able to power real lightsabers. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. When Star Wars first came out, physicists noted that creating a planet buster like the Death Star was theoretically impossible, a claim that they now know to be incorrect, as they have discovered that there is no upper limit at all to the amount of energy that you can fit into things like hydrogen bombs and powerful lasers that you can unleash onto poor planets. In fact, these lasers already occur naturally in space via new black holes that easily destroy any planet caught in their path. If you want to know other fascinating science behind your favorite movies and characters, then check out this channel's library of other research videos such as these. See you in the next one.